I get the feeling on Friday that Monday was going to pop. When I get that feeling, I always win those. Why? Why, Adam? Why? He's a gut guy. He's a gut guy. That's right. Hey folks, Pat Mitchell here. Joining me this morning is Adam. We are going to be uh, having a little bit of a fun episode. Uh, we're going to be busting some balls, uh, having a little bit of fun, and correcting and educating uh, some comments. We're going to dive into my comment section. We're going to discuss how people kind of look at trading and everything else, and some of the comments that they make. Some good, some bad, some really bloody stupid. So let's get into it, and uh, you'll kind of see where this is going. It's not necessarily, we're not just going to like harp on people or something like that. There's there's a point to this. So uh, how you doing, Adam? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I think it's going to be a good morning. We, uh, we were already having a pretty good discussion here this morning about uh, some other things, but we wanted to do this episode uh, for a little while because it's funny that um, you know, a couple comments that come up and, um, it almost becomes like a, a catchphrase or, or, or something. We, we talk about like an inside joke. It, uh, almost becomes part of our day to day because of some of the things that, that get said. And, uh, I'm sure everyone can agree, uh, when you dive into the comment section on any social media, Things get a little bit weird and it kind of makes you really on a, on a more serious matter. When you start looking at, you know, comment sections and stuff like that, it really makes you uh, weep for society. Sometimes it just, it just, it definitely gives you an idea of, you know, just the intelligence level of, of the masses and how divided people are and everything else like that. So, um, like I said, not only is this just going to be, we're going to be busting some balls and having some fun, but I think at the, uh, hopefully, you know, more people take the time to maybe be a little more patient with some of the stupid people out there. Um, that's the best way of putting it. You know, when you're reading a comment, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's fine to bust balls and, and stuff like that. But, you know, to, to kind of keep digging at these people, maybe they just don't know, you know, there's a, there's a lot of uneducated people about the topics that they're commenting on. And they just really don't know any better. And they think they know because they got fed some bad advice. So that's that's kind of what we're what we're after here. So maybe what do you say, Adam? We just dive into it or what? Yeah, let's dive in. You know, and just one thing that comes to mind is some of these things we're gonna comment on, you know, we might be having a laugh here and there, but it's also it's very easily why we may not speak out. There's pieces of us in a lot of these comments we're gonna look at, whether we yeah. want to admit it or not. You know, there's always a territory where we venture off into where maybe we shouldn't be and we might expose ourselves. So while we're having a little bit of fun with this, the kind of the goal is to also reflect and say, gee, are there areas of our life where maybe we're um, the gut guy or the business guy, right? Yeah. I know I've been a gut guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I live to regret it. So yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think what Adam says is right. There's, there is a little bit of a, all of us in these, maybe at one point or time in your life or another. And, um, you know, I, I think one of the biggest lessons and one of the biggest things on social media, I don't know about you, Adam, but with myself, there's lots of times I'll type something out and then just, just erase. It's just number one, it's not worth your time. Um, mm -hmm. or number two, maybe you just rethink it. And that's like, yes, ah, uh, maybe I misread that. Right. And it's like, yeah. uh, maybe I'm just a little too fucking sensitive here today. Right. Yeah. And all the time, actually. Oh, it's just there. There's probably more comments that haven't been sent that I know I've typed in the in my life that I'm glad I never sent. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, some people ask me, like, why do you entertain this? Why do you why do you care? And it's like or a lot of people will say stuff like, oh, it's just a hater. Or it's just a troll. And it's like, no, a lot of the times it's, you can tell who's just a troll. A troll is a troll. They're not obviously worth your time. They're just trying to get a reaction out of you. That's not what a lot of this is. And that's what a lot of people say. And it, I don't want to say it bothers me, but it, it, it bothers me when people say, oh, fuck the haters, fuck the trolls. It's like, no, you're, you're missing it. These aren't haters. These aren't trolls. They're actual people 
making a statement. And sometimes you can just let a real ignorant statement go because it, do it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I fucking win. I know how I live my life. And I'm sure uh, if we were a, a fly on the wall in their lives, you would know that I win, period, right? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, there, there's a lot of times that you can just let things go. But there's other times where people just need to be corrected, right? Where it's like, what you're saying is, compl it's just, it's false. It's not right. You're looking at it incorrectly. You're looking at it from, from a day trading perspective. You're, look, you're looking at it from like a really new trader's perspective. It's like you don't know what you don't know. So generally, when I see those, I'll give a pretty long-winded response, right? And it's, it's something to the effect of, this is why you're incorrect. And I'll go and I'll take my time and try and correct, right? And I'll give them that one opportunity to either read it and then come back with something. Maybe they have another question or another statement that's still a little on the edge, but you can tell that they're trying to maybe understand a little bit more. Or if they just come back at you and say some like some bullshit, it's just like, they just try and like give you a burn. It's like, well, you're just not worth my time. If, if you're right. going to let your ego get that in the way of your learning, that's, that's going to be your problem. Cause at the end of the day, that's, that's why I'm here. I'm trying to educate people and, um, yeah, so I think we'll get into it. Let me share my screen and get these rocking and rolling. Give me one quick sec. Okay, so this video had to do with the very first one. And some of these are going to seem like they're, they're, there's not a lot there. But trust me, just go along with it and you're going to understand where it's going. So this was a video. And if you haven't seen this one, man, I highly recommend it. This is titled How to Fix Holes in Your Day Trading Game via Trade Entries. And what this video describes is how to use your trade entries and then go up against the actual chart, the, the actual stock chart, and, and assess where you actually went wrong. And for a free video on YouTube, this right here, it's pure, it's pure gold. This should behind, be behind a paywall, okay? I basically tell you exactly how to fix the holes in your day trading game. This is coming from a guy like with 10 years experience in day trading where when I first started out, there wasn't education and information like this at all. There was nothing like this. So to have something available for free, maybe just listen and take it for what it is. So... Um, this Diamond Hand LLC writes, why not just drag your stop, stop into profit once target is hit or drag stop to that target instead of limiting upside? So th the interesting thing that I find, Adam, in this, and the reason why I screenshotted this one is he's asking a simple question, right? That's, that's what it looks like. What he's actually saying is he wants to be Mr. Diamond Hands and hold forever on every single trade. Not every single day trade or trade that you take is worth holding forever. Now, I know, I know he's not saying he's going to hold forever. What he's saying is limiting upside. He believes what we're doing is limiting upside. Well, what he's missing because of his inexperience is... A lot of these trades, it's not about massive potential. There is no massive potential there. What we have is an opportunity to take it into what I call a uh, natural price movement. It's my natural price movement theory. And it's a, it's a beautiful, brilliant way of getting little opportunities here and there where it's almost the same as and I'll ask you a question, Adam. If you were walking down the street, like serious question, and you saw a $1 bill, let's start real small, a $1 bill laying on the ground, would you just walk past it or would you pick it up? Oh, I would certainly pick it up. I of mean, course. A dollar is a dollar, right? Not? Yeah. And it's a free dollar. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask you the same question about a $100 bill. What would, what would you do? Oh, I I probably would hurry towards it a little bit faster. There you go. You would pick <laughs> so it up. It blow away. So there's going to be $100 bills and there's going to be $1 bills. Some trades are $1 bills. Now, I'm not saying you're only going to make a dollar. I hope you understand the context and the analogy I'm trying to give you here. But it's not just always dragging your stop and everything else and have a trailing stop. I understand how in theory that makes sense to always maximize profit potential. But at the end of the day, 
just through, again, a decade's worth of experience from a consistent professional trader here. Take my advice when I tell you not every trade is worth doing that. A lot of these trades are going to come up into that first resistance or support level and like, that's it. That's all you're getting. They're just little opportunities. And the video that he's making this comment on has absolutely nothing to do with that. This video, if that's the question that you're asking, you could have come up with 20 different questions. You, ha you have a real opportunity on some YouTube channels that are out there where you have a legit, le legitimate professional trader that's willing to give his time away for free and answer any question, by the way, if it's a legitimate question. And you can scroll through my, my comments and see I do answer questions. So why not take the opportunity to have something that is relevant to the video that I'm talking about. Because again, if you have not seen this video, how to fix your holes in day trading game via trade entries, oh, run as fast as you can and go watch it. It's a great video. And again, it seems like a very innocent question, but it's like the answer really is, it's, it's just about little opportunities. We're day traders, right? It's not about swing trading. If it was a swing trade, that's a different story. But so... He's focusing on limiting upside, diamond hands, right? Yeah. Is this a peak? What drives him fundamentally as a trader? Upside. Yeah. And he sees it as limiting upside, but isn't a professional trader looking to limit risk? Isn't that, I mean, that's what I had to, I know what, through your education. We, we need to focus not on the upside. The upside comes, yeah. but it only comes once you actually learn to correctly limit risk. So his question is almost exposing where his mind is truly at because of all the things he could ask and be thinking about, it's not risk. It's like he wants profit, he wants upside, and yep. he's missing the whole point of much of this process of becoming a professional trader and it's first limiting risk. Yeah, yeah it's not about profit. And profit will come, right? And that's where a lot of people, a lot of traders really mess up. They think the the main focus or the main uh, thing that you're trying to do as a trader is make money. And that's not. Your job as a trader is to trade well, right? And always think about the risk first because profits are a product of process, so if you stop and you really think about what that means is those profits will come if, if and only if you're thinking about the process and trading correctly. It's a byproduct. Profits are a byproduct. That's all they are. So this is, this one's pretty funny. And this is, so I was talking about in this video, how to transition into a full-time uh, day trader, uh, pointers and tips. So <clears throat> what this had to do was we were talking about, you know, where I am in my career and, and my life and trying to convey that to people that this is why we work so hard as traders. It's not to make money. It's about freedom. And I kind of went off and I, I've talked about this lots before that everything I have, I own. So then nobody can take that away from me. I don't lease anything. I don't have mortgages. I'm in a, a very privileged position that was brought to me by a lot of hard work, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And the point that I was trying to make about this is when you own things, nobody can take it away from you. You, you don't owe anybody anything. The cars I have, the, the properties, the houses, the everything I have, I own, Okay. And it was important to get through to people about the, the power of ownership and the freedom of ownership, not leasing, not mortgaging, not having credit cards. I don't owe the banks a single dollar. And it's, a, it's powerful. There's power in that because you're not living underneath anybody's thumb. And that's the way I've, I've always wanted to live. And I would imagine for people that are watching this, that's probably your main goal. If you were to break it down, it's probably freedom. So then you have people that miss the point completely. And it's, there's always one or two in every crowd, you know, at work, when you got these fucking guys, there's always one asshole, right? This, this here, this Kevin Strong, 9520 property taxes, bro. It, when people miss the point, it, what I find 
on a deeper level when it comes to these types of things. And you can tell I just like laughed at him and put a face palm emoji because it's like, what else do you say to that? When you miss the point this much on a video that's that's basically giving you a blueprint to not only as a trader, but just like in life in general, like your mindset of like how to how to really think, you know, I we were never taught in in school, elementary, junior high, high school. Um, we we were never taught how to actually think like a successful person. It's always about being a slave or a fancy slave. And that's kind of what they want to raise in the school system. Um, that's pretty apparent nowadays, right? And when you're giving somebody something, they will always they will always try and find an excuse. It's like the crab, uh, the crab bucket theory, right? So when you have a bucket of crabs and one crab will try to escape, the rest of the crabs will try and bring them back down and claw them back down. It's that type of person. That's what this guy is. There's one in every crowd, and that's who Kevin is. Kevin is the guy that wants to see or come up with excuses or see others fail. That's that's really what it boils down to. I've seen this type of shit a million times, and I'm sure Adam can attest to this too. Like those types of people that will always find some chink in the chain, some some glitch where it's like, ah property taxes. I got you. You're not actually free. Do you know? It's like, do you know what I pay in property taxes down here? It'd make you fucking sick. It's like 200 bucks a year for all that fucking land I got up in the mountains. I think I pay 500 or 800 bucks a year on the house I'm sitting in right now that I own. Plus I got other properties just down the road, I got three properties, all totaling each three acres a piece. So it's another nine, 10 acres I got. It's a couple few hundred bucks. Do you think, do you think a few hundred bucks matters? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's silly. To put it bluntly, it's like, a, it's like a very loserish way to think. It's like, ah, no, you're never free. You'll always be a slave because of property taxes. You know, having a personality where you just make quick assumptions with very yeah. little information, yeah. right? He, it's like he's just he lives his life on assumptions. If yeah. you're that quick to type something, he doesn't know you, doesn't know your situation, doesn't know no. how you've employed a, a, a strategic way to create your life. You can just get a one way, well, you did, but you didn't just, <laughs> it's just buy a place and stumble into low property taxes you've you've designed the life you have yeah based on a lot of factors and for kevin it's more like maybe a question well man i'm curious what do you how are your property taxes does that hold you back exactly and, and maybe if he's concerned ask a question rather than make an assumption and that or a statement. Right there, then he's collecting information and helping himself yeah rather than exposing himself yeah, because if he's watching the video and he made it up to the point where I'm talking about that, I'm probably halfway or three quarters of the way through that video. So then he's he's actually watching and he's listening, right? So it's like, maybe ask a question. Don't make, an, make a statement or an assumption. Like, I think what a lot of people do is they project their chaotic life, their mess of a life onto others. And they don't understand that there are people in this world that are methodical in every move that they make. And that's who Kevin is talking to right now. He's talking to a guy that makes decisions off of thought, well thought out decisions that there's no chaos. I don't have chaos in my life. I'm someone that always tries to think two and three steps ahead when people make comments like that like we've all heard that when people make a comment it's a direct reflection of themselves and that's what it is that's what it the breakdown the mechanics of it so to speak really is he lives a life and makes rash decisions you can tell just by the comment click enter right types it out enters doesn't think about it and that's how he lives his life what I would ask of guys like Kevin and Kevin to stop and think before hitting enter, before sending that, 
And that's what I, I would really wish people would do is just think for a second. Like if you have a question about property taxes, number one, don't call a stranger that you just met. Like, would you, would you speak to me like that in person? If you're going to conduct, conduct yourself with respect, right. And treat others with respect. It's just like property taxes, bro. Like I'm not, I'm not your fucking bro, man. I don't, I don't fucking know you, Kevin. It'd be like me calling you Kev, right? You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, what the fuck is that? Right? Like, if you have a question, ask a question, right? Don't make a statement. Don't make an assumption. And I know it's social media and I know we're digging into the weeds of social media comments. I understand that. But I think it's a conversation that should be had because a lot of people don't know how to speak to people anymore. And that's starting to translate more and more into people's day-to-day -day lives. You can see it on the street nowadays where you will literally never get anywhere. Nobody will take you seriously if that's how you speak. Property taxes, bro. I got you, bro. You know, it's it's nonsense is what it is. Oh, so this one's pretty interesting. And this isn't like, there's really not much to like beat this guy up on, so to speak. So in this video, unconventional money and asset protection uh, for troubled times, um, and we're talking about debt mentality and some of the unconventional ways that I hold my money. Now I do it conventional and I do it unconventional as well. And this fellow here, um, Ronald was asking, uh, curious and just want an opinion, uh, have a vacation rental, have 250,000 of equity and positive cash flow. Uh, 3.5% interest rate and owe 425,000. Should I just sell or continue vacation rental? I think the first thing that I want to talk about on this one is there's very little information that's given there. I, I don't know if that's all of the information, but I think the main takeaway from this one and we're talking about in this in this video, and we've done other videos on it. Be careful who you ask for advice from. Now, it just so happens that Ronald hit he hit the jackpot by asking a question or looking for advice um, from a, a guy, a, a, a random person on the internet that will not ever steer anybody wrong. I would never say something to fuck with someone or to lead them down the wrong path. It's not in my nature. When it comes to stuff like that and questions like that, like I take it pretty serious. And that's why I never responded to him because I don't have all the information. That's a huge decision and a big ask. So Adam has come to me before here with, um, and Chrissy as well, um, with financial advice and advice on what he should do with another business that he has. And these are, these are big decisions. So when he comes to me, I know he's looking for well thought out of advice, right? And I'll never just shoot from the hip and say, do this, do that. Right. And there's a lot of people that'll do that. They'll just give you like fucking half cocked advice that like, really, it's not actionable. So when somebody comes to me, what I'm trying to get at here, I put time, like a lot of time, into how I'm going to respond to that question. And what he's asking me for, it's a, it's a big ask. And I don't think people understand how big of an ask that is. I know Adam understands the gravity of certain questions and the gravity of certain situations. So it's not, it's not a small ask, is it, Adam? No, no, it's a huge ask because the only way you actually provide an accurate answer to something like this is, well, you've got to come in and start asking questions. You know, <laughs> interesting enough, what are property taxes? Yep. Where, where is this vacation rental located? Is it highly seasonal? Is it volatile? Is it in a market that's at risk to economic downturns and upturns? I mean, there's just, you, you've got to ask a whole bunch of different questions. What's your long-term goals? You know, what, I mean, there's so many things that you need to understand as far as alignment, opportunity, risk, that it's quite remarkable that somebody would just fire off a question like this um, regarding such a large decision um, that requires some real thought and, um, of course, a whole lot more information.
and that's what I'm getting at, right? Like, I can't even offer an opinion with that. No, you know, should no, I get nor, nor would I want well, to? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. there's there's a lot there's a lot of follow up to Ronald's question. And how long of a conversation do you think that would be? Probably a two hour long conversation of going back and forth. Probably Adam, like for what he's asking for me oh, to least. give him, yeah. like at least, and then follow yeah, up and everything else. Yeah, like you're talking. Yeah. That's a big ask. And mm -hmm. I think it's another, like, this is, this is where people get themselves into trouble in life, man. Right. They're asking questions and just, they think it's a simple question. So he probably asked Joe Blow down the street. Let's say maybe he's asked his neighbor. Maybe he's asked some dude he works with that doesn't really give a fuck about him. And that guy is going to give him a response that is going to take about 30 seconds. Right. It's like, oh yeah, no, if, if, if you're in debt, just sell it or no, you're, you're making money. Just, just keep it. And that'll be that. Right. And he's going to base his decision off of something that was given to him by someone that absolutely put no thought or effort into it. What I'm getting at with this and what Adam just said here is be careful the questions that you ask and understand what you're getting yourself into. Sometimes, and I know you're just looking for a quick response maybe, but that is not a quick response question. When you're dealing with serious people, people that, you know, actually care about others and want to help them when like, cause they know the value of advice. Like if I were to go and ask anyone that I know, um, that would be worthy of, uh, me receiving their advice, like who I would deem you know, a proper a person to ask for advice. I know that's not, that's not a small ask. It's a, it, it's, it's a serious question that is going to take a lot of thought and a lot of time on that person's end. So I want to make sure that that person is somebody that is credible and that I know will give me a response. So number one, Ronald, what I would say to you in this question is, you know, you happen to luck out and get somebody that would actually answer that correctly and would never steer you in the wrong direction at all. Like never, it's not in my nature to do that. And number two, I don't know if you know what you're asking. There's hours and hours of back and forth and there's no way I can just give you a quick little response typing. And that's why I never responded. See, people will look at that and they'll go, oh, he never answered the question. He doesn't give a shit. No, I didn't answer the question because I do give a shit. Like that's, that's the difference. When you go on, if you go and take a look at like financial uh, Twitter or financial YouTube and you go in the comment section, you have that guy just like rattling off a bunch of advice of, over questions like this. That guy doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck at all because these demand hours of attention and a lot of information. If you have somebody that would respond to a question like this, okay, and say, do this, do that, they are nothing but ego driven. They are full of ego, okay? They never asked any follow up questions. They didn't ask about where it is, is it seasonal? A million questions that a guy can ask about that vacation property. This is where that extra level of thought comes in, right? Oh, it's, it's just understanding that, like, is this really the format? for that kind of a question, you know, or, or in the comment section of a YouTube video on money management. And yes, there are, we're talking about money management and the person I think res respects you enough to want your opinion, mm -hmm. but this is not the format. It, it's, it's, you know, it's like sitting down at dinner and just with people you just met, you know, and asking, I don't know, should I divorce my wife? Yeah, you know, it's probably not the time and the place to have that kind of a conversation. We just met, we're having dinner, uh, we're all strangers, and you want me to tell me whether or not you should divorce your wife? Um, let's get to know each other a little bit, and then let's maybe <laughs> know where each other's coming from. So it's kind of that, it's just understanding when and where is the type of place to have these kinds of conversations. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. 
Okay, so this one here was based off of the, oh, this, this one's really interesting. Um, so this is $30 to a million in 365 day trading money management rules that make you rich. Okay. Obviously very clickbaity. Um, but that title $30 to a million in 365 days. That's my story about basically when I had enough and this is, that's an actual true story. And that's what this M tattoo represents is where I went from $30, my last $30 and made a million dollars in 365 days. Actually, it was a little bit under a year, but just easier to say it like that. So remember, it is $30 to a million in, 365, in 365 days. So this video, I go into detail and there was absolutely no, I, I'm not a bragger. When people think when you're talking about money and the things that you have, again, this is a video where I talk about how I don't owe anybody anything. I'm very proud of that. And that's, that's, if people only understood how how freeing and how powerful that is, they would see that as pure motivation. I rarely will you see any pictures of my Porsche or my Ferrari or my Corvette or the $2 million fucking watch collection I have. You'll rarely see any of that. I'm not interested in that. I'm just not that guy. I own nice things because I like them. I'm interested in them. I don't wear watches in order to flex. I am a lover of horology. Okay. Same with cars. The cars that I have, I have a love for motorsports and cars. I like driving fast. I love a Porsche, not because it's a Porsche, because when you get in a Porsche, you feel the fucking road. It is a bare bones cockpit. There is no luxury about it. Same with my Ferrari. My Ferrari on the inside, there's Honda Civics that look nicer on the inside. This is a driver's car, okay? I own these things because of the love that I have for them. So what uh, uh, Charlie says here, if anyone came here to learn how to day trade by someone genuine and sincere, this ain't the place bragging about his Porsche million exclamation points track down Ross Cameron warrior trading changed my life. Now this is really interesting and I'm going to give you the most, the absolutely most genuine and sincere take I can give you. Okay. Now, number one in this video, again, there's, I don't even know if I mentioned my Porsche in this, to be honest. I, it's not, I never mentioned my Porsche. My Porsche is, in fact, I gave it to Chrissy. It's Chrissy's car, right? Like I prefer to drive my, my Corvette Z06 or my Ferrari. Those are the cars I enjoy to drive because of the sound that they make and the, the way that they drive. Whole other story, okay? There's no bragging. I'm not, I'm not that guy at all, okay? Um, am I a flashy guy, Adam? You were just down here for two weeks. What was I wearing? I'm wearing fucking dirty fucking old boots that are covered in cow and horse shit from my farm and a t-shirt and board drawing. shorts. That's it. Yeah. Like I'm not a fly. I'm not that guy like at all. Um, so there's that. Now he made it right to the end of this video. And there is a lot. If you haven't seen this video, again, this is one of those bangers that is full of advice that will actually make you money in, in day trading. Straight up. Okay. So he would have made it to the end of this video when I made the comment about Ross. And there's a reason why I did this. And I make this comment about Ross. Now, years and years ago, I used to harp on all of these guys the Tim Sykes, the Ross Camerons of the world. Now, you have to remember, I've dealt with these people back and forth on a, on a personal end, okay? This isn't like just like just from the internet. So I know how they are behind the scenes, okay? Now, I'm going to give you a little, a little uh, breakdown of Ross. And I, I know there's a lot of people that stick up for him. You think he's a wonderful guy. He isn't. 
inside of his room in chat one day and there was a member of his that was basically on his last leg and he asked a question in the chat room and said and it was a serious question by the way it's going to sound like it isn't but it was should i remortgage my home to basically start another day trading account because i just blew up my account Ross never responded to that. Never. And he never will. He never has chat open. He'll never look at it. Number two, not one single member of that service said anything to this guy. They left him hanging. And that's just one account. Adam, what would happen if somebody asked that question in trick trades? Would I not be all over that in a split second? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And okay. The, um Many members would care enough to um, yes. say, that's not, don't ever do that. You know, they would be ways. right there. They would be in so fast. It would make that guy's head spin like immediately. Right. So if you want to talk about somebody that is sincere and honest and genuine, I think what the real issue is, is people like this, they get fucked up. And they get confused over what being genuine and sincere is. They'll take someone that will always smile at you as genuine and sincere. No, what that person's actually doing, if you have a coach or you're learning from someone, because that's what that would be, that would be a coach uh, student uh, relationship. And if you have that person, they'll never say a combative thing to you and they will only tell you that you are doing well, they are a phony. They're only concerned about your subscription payment. Only. Okay? And that, that's the reality of the situation. So let's read what he says next. I'm pulling in $2,000 to $5,000 days as an average after just four months, tr months trading. Stop. You have no idea what you're talking about. In fact, I would be willing to bet that $5,000 day average, okay, that he's already blowing up. And I'll tell you why. If he's been trading for four months, if you want to talk about someone that is genuine and sincere in their, in their education, I, again would jump down this member's throat immediately and put a stop to that. Why? Because that would be like giving the keys, my keys to um, my Ferrari to you that have never driven a car like that. And then telling you to jump in, start it up. And I want you to drive this prick as fast as you can. Redline that motherfucker at 9,500 RPM. Just fucking beat on it. What do you think is going to happen? You would get a hundred yards down the road before you would wrap that around a tree. Guaranteed. That's what this guy's doing. So if you want to talk about honest and sincere, this guy is coming from a place of four months day trading experience. Dude, you don't know what you don't know. You have this much experience. I don't even have a gap in my fingers. You have none. None trading experience, none. You don't know what you're talking about. And this is a classic case of traders that get involved with day trading, that they think that they know what they're doing because they've lucked out and they've followed Rossi in to some fucking trade. And he's making 2000 to $5,000 on average, average, okay? So number one, that's a pretty big spread. What is what is it? Is it 2,000 or is it 5,000 or is it somewhere in between? That's, that's a spread of thousands of dollars. That is not an average. You're giving like a whole fucking deal there. You, this is the problem with a lot of new traders. You, when you make comments like this, you look fucking ridiculous in the eyes of a professional or anyone with more than four months experience. So it's like, pump the brakes there, grasshopper. You don't know shit. Just, just stop. Because again, if Ross, if he's learning from Ross, 
what the fuck is he doing on my YouTube channel? Well, exactly. And why does he need more day trading uh, money management rules that will make him rich? I'd say you're in a pretty high bracket. You yeah. know, the very fact that he's watching this video, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't line up. Why are you watching yeah. YouTube videos on that when you're that's you're pretty much a, a top 0.01 percent trader if you're averaging two to five K a day? Well, and that's, and that's the next point too. This is where a lot of new traders fuck up as well, where their pool size, their sample size isn't long enough. They think four months is a long time. They think six months is a long time. You'll have traders that have been trading for a year, maybe two years, often on consistency. Maybe they have consistency for like six months. It's not consistency. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay, when you're talking about consistency, you're talking about true consistency over a span of years. This is a game of years. That's what it's a game of. It's not a game of weeks or months. Okay, you're talking years. In order for you to be consistent, now you're throwing around the word consistent and everything else. You're not. You've been day trading for four months. And like I said, at the time of this video, and this was two months ago, the amount of money he's making and the amount of risk he would be taking, I guarantee, I guarantee he is blowing up or has come real fucking close. That's the fact of it. And that's the truth of it. So, and to get caught up on Ross, right? Like, and saying how genuine and sincere he is, man, oh man, if you guys only fucking knew the ones that are a member of his service, if you only knew that type of fucking garbage, man, man, he's a bad guy. I'm not going to get into detail because it's not worth it. And I'm not, I don't want to sling mud. And I know I've already done that enough talking about this shit, but he's not a good guy guys like if you can't see through that when somebody smiles in your face day in and day out and they'll never tell you straight you don't want to learn from people like that okay this this one's hilarious it's off of the same video so thirty dollars to a million in 365 days remember that so this uh brainiac writes in a standard year there are about 265 i don't know why he wrote it like that 265 uh, day, weekday, work days. To make $30 million realistically in trading, you need to make, and he crunched the numbers, $115,384.61 every day. Busted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, you might want to reread that and get your uh, comprehension skills above a grade two level. He even crunched the numbers, Adam. He crunched the numbers. Well, you had to be called where, out. Where does that say that I make $30 million a year? Does it? It's just this is a human being that um, is subjected to impulse. Which 100%. Is a, which is in trading the death sentence. If you can't control your impulses, you're dead. And it's like it's impulse on a whole other level like if you think about the motions there he looked at the thumbnail right he obviously didn't watch the video right so he reacted only to the thumbnail number one so he's though he's one of those guys that re reacts to like headlines and like types out a whole response fuck these guys they can't believe they're doing this and it's a headline number one he misreads the headlines obviously and then number two He's a dog seeing red in such a bad way. You can't, there, that dog has no recall because he's breaking out his calculator. He's on his fucking phone, crunching numbers. He's so upset where he doesn't realize he completely misread that. That's $30 to a million in 365. Not $30 million a year. Where did he and the assumption and the jumping to conclusions is on a whole other level here. Now he's assuming that I said in that, that I make $30 million a year every year, no matter what, since the beginning of time. There's so much to talk about. Like, oh man, where, where do we even begin? This is one of the main problems that is going on on the planet right now.
You have people jumping to conclusions, reading headlines, or reacting to thumbnails without digging deeper and finding out or rereading. It's like, did I read that right? That doesn't look right. Maybe I better read that again. No, can't stop himself. Immediate type away and hit send. Crunching numbers. He probably took, after he read that, grabbed his phone, worked that all out, and then typed all of this shit out. Like you're working a problem out that needs nothing to be worked out. You're spending minutes of your day. Minutes may not seem like lots, but think of how many times. If this guy is reacted like this off of one, one thumbnail that he didn't take the time to actually fucking watch the video. Wow. The crazy thing is you correct them. And yeah, I wasn't nice about it, but Jesus Christ. I even laughed and said, you need to read that thumbnail again. Nowhere do I say I made 30 million in a year. No response, no nothing. Just like, oh, it's like, if I don't move, they won't see me. This is such a major problem with people. It's absolutely ridiculous the way people conduct themselves. And, you know, and I'm not saying that I'm not guilty of that as well, where I've misread something and reacted. We, we all do it. I've done it. If I get corrected, though, like that, oh, and hey, be thanks. like, oh, shit, I would be all over it. And like, oh, okay, I'll go, I'll go put my tail between my legs over there, right? It's like, well, the silence is what's so, also so weird. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, you, you just write it fast. You commented and you're corrected. It'd be like, oh, my, you know, my bad. Thanks for, that makes sense now. Great video. Thanks. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. All cool. Yeah. But the silence is, is pretty, it's telling in of itself. Oh, it's so, it's so crazy. It really, really is. There's a lot of people out there that do that. That's really all I have to say about that. If you're one of those people, man, that just read headlines, man, oh man, oh man, in this day and age, it's going to get you into big trouble, man, because you're going to, this fucking guy is going to go through the rest of his life. He probably tells stories about some asshole he saw on YouTube claiming he makes $30 million a year. You, you know what I mean? And do you see how that shit spreads? And this is where damage is done, right? where you actually had a real opportunity to learn from someone that, and I know it sounds very, very clickbaity and very catchy. And I've talked about it a lot, but that's why I have this M on my wrist. This is a legitimate story from someone that was completely fucked. So completely fucked, man. I was so fucked. And I was a contract welder. I come from a blue collar background. I'm very proud of that. I didn't come from anything. I was basically doomed and destined to continue the life that my family has been in a complete repetitive cycle with of just basically fucking having fuck all destined for my kid to have fuck all his kid to have fuck all. And I put a stop to that. I ended the cycle of bullshit. Right. And I'm proud of that. So don't misquote me. Don't do that. You have an ability to learn from someone that can actually show you how to do this. Because that statement of that is correct. The only thing that is untrue is the timeline. It was actually less than 365 days, less than a year. And if you can learn from someone like that, that actually beat the odds, beat the system, it's important, guys. I know people just think that all of this social media shit is just like, like there's no substance anymore. And I think that that's the problem. They can't even re recognize or realize they just react to a thumbnail. Didn't watch the video. Maybe if he would have watched the video, he would have seen, oh shit, maybe I can learn something from this guy. He's obviously searching for this stuff. It's crazy. So now we're going to get into the last and my favorite, and we're going to wrap this video up because it is getting a little bit long. We got a lot of more comments to go. If you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Please give it a thumbs up. It does help. Write a comment, write your own stupid comment as well. Maybe you'll get featured on the next one. Don't do that. Um, but we'll probably make a part two of this, but this is one of my favorites. This was during a uh, live stream and this live stream was, I believe it was taken from a 
uh, trade recap, I believe. Right here, Jim Flats writes, I don't like to only look at the charts. All the people that follow the technicals are synced up with everyone doing the same. That's part one. So let's discuss that. So what he's talking about, what Jimmy Boy is talking about here is, well, that's called volume. And what you want to do is recognize where people are going to buy or short or sell or execute. That's why people follow technicals. These are price points, not just from a retail trader perspective. That's all Jimmy's thinking about is retail. You need to use technicals because that's where a lot of algorithms are attached to, specifically trend with algorithms for institutional volume, institutional traders. That's where the real volume and the real money is. So when you're saying, I don't like to use technicals because everybody uses technicals, you do realize how illogical that is. You don't understand how the, the market mechanics work. You need that volume in these buy areas. That's why technicals do work. But you need to understand what type of trader you are. There's a reason why I am a technical trader, a technically based trader. I am a technician. I will follow the technicals and I have a strategy based around that. Technicals work because that's where the volume is. So you're saying that you don't like to only look at the charts because of this and that. You're confused as a trader. You're probably not only look at the charts. So that tells me that you do look at the charts. You probably look at fundamentals. You probably look at news plays. You probably look at data. Tell me what fucking trader are you? You got four different things going on. You're confusing yourself. This is a, this is a classic mistake that so many inexperienced traders make. They don't know what type of trader they are at all. They're everything. So that's number one. Number two, now his strategy is revealed, which is such a brilliant strategy. I'm a gut guy. So Jim is a gut guy. Okay. How does he know it's going to do what it's going to do? He's a gut guy. Follows his gut. Yeah, he follows his gut, man. I only own one stock and I'm all in on it. I get the feeling on Friday that Monday was going to pop. When I get that feeling, I always win those. Why? Why, Adam? Why? He's a gut guy. He's a gut guy. That's right. So Jim's a gut guy. He's only got one stock. Fucking all in on it, man. Let her buck. What's the worst that could happen? Nothing. Because he's going <laughs> off of his gut. Nothing bad will ever happen. That is one of the soundest strategies I think I've ever fucking heard in my 43 years. There's year never of been life. a market crash, but I guess yeah. if you're going by your gut, you'll It'll know never when happen. It'll never happen. No, because his gut would tell him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, in all fucking serious now, Jim, get your head out of your ass, man. That's what's going on. That, that head is so far up your ass right now. You don't know which way is up or down. So number one, you being a gut guy, that is such a classic new trader mistake. And because you're in on one stock, doesn't make you a trader. I don't know if you're claiming to be a trader or what, doesn't matter. But that one stock, because you went in on your gut, maybe there's more to it than gut, okay? And maybe you just lucked out. And this strategy will never carry you long term. You're a disaster waiting to happen. Then he's saying he's all in on it. Like this, this is a hotbed of really bad decision making. Now, anybody will tell you, tell you this. I'm not the only guy that's going to tell you this. Going all in on one stock is fucking suicide. That's what that is. It is nonsense. You need diversification of assets. Because that tells me if you go all in on something, you are probably uh, more susceptible to be going all in on other things as well. Going all in on anything is a very bad idea. Why? Because sometimes your gut fails you, okay? Your gut is not an indicator. Your gut doesn't mean anything. Your gut is nonsense. Your gut, stop that. And then the whole... I get the feeling on Friday that Monday was going to pop. 
on what fucking planet do your feelings or gut have anything to do with control of the market? Now, there might be something more there, right? Maybe there were some technicals. Maybe there was something that was telling. But your gut and your feeling, oh, good Lord, Jim, cut that shit out, dude. I know we're having a little bit of fun with you and we're busting your balls. But seriously, dude, you actually taking the time to write this is my next point. You're commenting on a professional trader's video. Okay. Now I know a lot of people get fucked up when they see uh, my YouTube. They think I'm a YouTube trader. You got the wrong guy from that. YouTube is absolutely riddled with slithery little snakes and everything else where people don't actually trade and they are posers and fakes and frauds and phonies. You actually found one guy that could actually help you and you should really zip your fucking lip and shut the fuck up and just listen. That's really what you should do in this situation. You're not going to learn a goddamn thing if you are a gut guy. You're not going to learn a fucking thing if you are going based off of feelings. You're not going to learn a fucking thing if you are all in on one stock. One of the most nonsensical comments to date on my YouTube. And that's, that's saying a lot, man. Like, I share with Adam all the stupidity I get all the time. And there's, there's a lot. And when I'm telling you, this one ranks right up there, you have to, I really hope you hear me, Jim, you have to cut that shit out, okay? I know I know it hurts getting fucking called out. I know it does, man. It doesn't feel good. Just fucking eat it. Learn from it. Because hopefully this will give you a little bit of a wake-up call as to the reality of this. Because... You're coming on a professional trader's YouTube and you're spouting your nonsense with a whole room. All that, those chat members are my members, okay? They see me do this shit live every day. You're not going to change their mind on going in on their gut. They won't do it. You got the wrong fucking crowd. Read the room, Jim. You're in the wrong place. Could be the right place for you, but man, oh man, all of that nonsense you spouted, Stop. Please stop. You're going to blow up. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see any trader blow up. As much as I'm having fun here busting your balls and picking on you a little bit. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't stop myself. I'm in the middle of a live stream there and I have to type in Jim, Jim, Jim. So many red flags with what you're saying. It's like, man, I have to stop the fucking stream and just type in because that's how on top of the charts of crazy that was. It was that's crazy. So well, I just apply that thinking to life, you know, oh, I want to travel from Texas to Florida. I don't need no map. I'm just going to get there by my gut. I don't need a compass. I mean, you'll be lost in two seconds. And in the first turn, you'll be lost. You'll never know where you went wrong, which is the scariest part. You're, you're so lost. You don't even know where you started getting lost. Right. Oh, the or fucking the physicists, the physicists in the Manhattan Project. What if they just went in on their fucking gut? Mm -hmm. No, nowhere other than any wrong? endeavor that has any kind of risk reward are there plans that just say, you know, throw them all out the window and just fly by the seat of your pants. I mean, man, I really want to pull up that last one with the. Uh... <laughs> Let's give you guys a bonus one. I ha I have to. I have to. It's too good not to do it right now. One sec. Here we go. This is one of my favorites. This is a so, classic. Market Trader 911 writes, this dude is a grifter. Stay away. So the video that he's making this comment on is day in the life, seven figure day trader. So basically what happens, and I am a seven figure day trader a year, and Adam was down here. And we did a little bit of a walk and talk. And I showed Adam and all of you guys around my, uh, my mountain property that I own here in the mountains of Costa Rica, where we're building a second house there or a home there. 
and just kind of took around, did a walk on talk, talking about like a lot of things that have to do with day trading and life and success. And then pointed out some really cool shit that's around that property. If you guys want to see real cool video, it's absolutely. And I know I say this from time to time, but this one takes the cake. This is my favorite video that I've ever produced to date. And I've got hundreds, if not thousands of videos that I produce. This is my favorite. So go check this one out. So Market Trader 911 writes on that video where I talk about I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. I'm just literally Adam is asking me questions about how I got to where I got and I'm showing him around the property. We're literally just having a conversation. And he writes, this dude is a grifter. Stay away. So when you make statements like that, I would love to know why you're making that statement. Like why? Because each and every single day, I post a trade recap and I show everything on that trade recap. You can see all my entries, all my exits, the PL on the day, win, lose, or draw. Okay. For those that may not know, if I don't have the time in a day and I don't post a, a, a recap, it is always posted. There is always screenshots. There is always transparency, always. Okay. And I've done this for years and years and years in our free Facebook group, the Trick Trades Day Traders War Room. You can look that up and join if you want. So there's that. I also day trade live uh, twice per week with a small focus group of traders. Uh, it's called our Momentum Program. And again, that is all day trading live. Okay. And I've done this for two years now. Adam ended up, and I didn't even know that this guy wrote this. So Adam just took it upon himself to write this. So you're saying that a person who teaches his craft daily to people who want to better, uh, want a better life is a grifter. Got it. That's all I'm trying to do. I just want people to do better and be better, right? Then market trader 911 in all of his infinite wisdom, right? He's a course seller, not a trader. Trust me, buddy. I know the business much better than you. Trust me, buddy. Trust me, the nameless, faceless on the internet. Trust me, buddy. The real interesting thing about this is, like I said, Adam was down here in Costa Rica in my office, sitting right there, right beside me, every single trading day for two weeks straight. You see any shenanigans, Adam? I saw nothing but a lot of teaching. And a Here lot himself, of fucking crushing uh, it. Based on, on real trades, no, no paper trading, that's for sure. It's all right there. Which is 100% consistent with um, everything you've done since the day I saw you um, on your fir on the, the first video, uh, YouTube video I saw of you yeah. when I immediately joined yeah. your service. Yeah. And I've never seen one hint of inconsistency in, I don't know, three years now. And that's the thing. So, um, this is another ex interesting case of, of assumptions, not knowing who you're talking to, A, you, and B, me. Now, the only thing I have to say is he does have an element of truth here. You know, if you do know this business, you are, he is correct. Yeah. This business is full of charlatans. It um, really is. And the unfortunate part is you've been grouped into the charlatans. They're all of them, almost all of them. There's one or two legit ones out there, yeah. as as you say and know and give credit to. Yeah. But everyone else are full of people that are core sellers. Yeah. And so I have to give him credit for that. But it's unfortunate that he hasn't taken the time to actually not assume and say, well, let me see if this guy is any different. Because especially on this video, this vi this yeah. of all the videos of all the this videos is the one to know that you're different yeah you know this is the one that you will see why you are apart from the others and that you aren't playing the same game you aren't even playing a game no and and that's what's sad about this person's comment he's right i just wish you would have said you know what this business is full of grifters this guy's different yeah because that's that's what it is especially like adam said of this video of all the videos, there's all it is. I'm literally just walking and talking. And it's, if you want to get a sense of 
who you're learning from, go click on that video. And the thing is, if you think that maybe it's like, oh, well, that's only one video. I have a decade's worth of social media out there. Go look. You will always, always see that person in the day in the life, seven figure day trader. You will see that exact person for a decade straight. Now, I don't know about you. It'd be mighty hard to keep that shit up for a decade, wouldn't it? In fact, I don't think anybody has made it that long and then has been exposed. Time will always expose people, right? I've said it for years that my predecessors have made it very difficult for a guy like me. And that's why, because 99.9% .9 of them are full of shit. They're full of shit, right? They take pictures at Airbnbs. They have pictures with their leased cars. Again, and I know I've said it a lot through this video, everything I have, I own, everything. And it's funny, if you look, most of my, U my YouTube thumbnails, they're not clickbaity at all. It just says what the video is about. And they'll have like a thousand views, 600 views. Watch those ones. Those are the ones that'll actually make you money, man. Well, it was a fun one today. I mean, I do enjoy doing these. Hopefully other people do. If you haven't done so already, please like the video if you made it this far. Um, it, it does really help with things and write a comment. And um, you know, if you, if you feel, if you're real extra special and you're really feeling like a badass, go ahead and share the video. Make sure to check out all my other videos in the YouTube, in, uh, on my YouTube, because it goes back, like I said, a long time. There's a lot of great stuff in there. There are so many, you name it, it's in there and it's all for free. So when I get called a, just a course seller, you're crazy. Go ahead and take a look at the YouTube channel. There is enough free content to fill your boots with. Okay, Adam. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, everybody. Adios.